When you were growing up as a kid, did you ever have any personal habits that a parent happened to point out to you as maybe something that needs a little bit of your attention to be changed? Made it very clear that, hey, this is something that you need to fix. What do you think? Huh? Are you going to do it? And, you know, maybe it was some, you know, just simple, like personal hygiene. Comb your hair. Maybe wash it. You know, uh, maybe it's time to start wearing deodorant. You know, it's, let's do a little, little something with those nails of yours, shall we? Maybe it was a work ethic that you had. You know, they, they got a note from school and, hey, you need to, to, all the homework that you're doing, you actually need to turn it in on time. Maybe they realize, you know, you're just not showing up you know, at work. You know, you, you, you can't do the no show, no call in. All right? You'll have no job. All right? Whatever it is, it, you know, it, but you as a rebellious teen, oh, oh, you just dismissed all of their constructive criticisms. You know, hey, you can't tell me what to do, you know, and you just kind of lived your life how you wanted to live it because this is you, you know. And, and that's pretty much how you, you did your life until, uh-huh, you met her. You know who I'm talking about, her, right? Yeah. And the, the longer that you spent with her, I was like, oh, just, you just loved every minute with her, every second. You couldn't get enough of being with her. And you, and just, you knew, this is the one. This is what I'm going to marry. Okay. But the longer that she spent with you, the more she realized and started to say things a lot like your family. Some, some of the personal things, you know, that you need to change. And guess what you did? You changed. <laughs> oh, you know you did. Because you loved her, and, 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 and you didn't want to lose her. And, and to be honest, it really wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a big burden put upon you to make these changes because you wanted to do it. There was, that's just what love does inside of us. It creates this desire to make whatever accommodations need to be made for the beloved. Now, we also know that if it's just one person who's making all of the changes and the other's not making any changes, we just instinctively know, that's not right, right? It kind of bothers us and we'll start mentioning, hey, you know, and, you know, in a healthy relationship, both partners at certain times are making changes and accommodations. That's just how a healthy relationship works. But did you know that even your relationship with God works that way? Both change. Oh yeah, it, it, it is so much more than just the, the, the little personal hygiene or work ethic in us that changes with God. You know, it's not that you took a shower and came to church on time. You know, that's all he's asking, right? I mean, it's, it's big changes. You know, the, the, that rebellion in the heart where you just hate to be told what to do and you love to be in control. All those changes that are big like the selfishness that's in us and, and the, the meanness. Yeah. But it's, it's not just completely one-sided either though. No, it's not like we have to fix ourselves, to make ourselves lovable enough so that God will finally take us in and, and we'll be His. You think about the amazing accommodations that the living God made for you. If you need some help really considering this, why just think of the very body of Jesus, the, the amount of change that Jesus went through, who lived in all glory and power and honor with his Father, being of the very same substance, light of light, true God of true God with the Father and the Holy Spirit. This, all of this majesty in the infinite Jesus, imagine the change then in his mother's womb as he grew tiny little arms 
and fingers and legs and toes. And for the very first time, his human heart began to beat at three weeks and one day of the moment after conception by the Holy Spirit. His eyes began to form at eight weeks, his ears at ten. Yeah, God really made some accommodations and some changes for us, his beloved. Now, Hebrews chapter 10, it, it talked about this body prepared. And, but it put it into the context of, of how our relationship with God used to be. And this is how it used to be, of, of sacrifices and offerings, and, which were all commanded by God and, and that we were to follow all the rules and regulations set out. It's it like kind of like a parent and a child relationship, a custodial relationship. This is what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, now do it. All right. That's, that was kind of the... the really, but, but we, and when I, when I say we, I mean all of humanity, but specifically that, that sliver of humanity that was specifically chosen out by God to be the rule keepers, the, the children of Israel who had the covenants, had the promises, we, like rebellious children, teenagers, decide, well, you can't tell me what to do. I'm going to, and we just dismissed it all. We're going to do however we want to do it. You know, and, and, and so we did. And now, like in every family, a teen has to go home and eat. You know, you got to live with your, with your family. So the, the, we had to still live with God. We still had to kind of show up and do certain things. So we attended worship now and then, especially during the religious holidays, you know. Okay, we'll show up. And, and, and then we would think that, our mere attendance, you know, and, and the offering and the sacrifice of our time just to be there for God, that, that should somehow appease him, you know? He should be thankful we're here. And, uh, of, of course, it, it didn't appease him. It didn't, <laughs> didn't impress him at all. And, and um, yeah, because that's not what God has intended for his beloved. That he, we would simply throw him a few crumbs, do a few things. He has come to be the dear father and we his dear children. So when we hear that the body of Jesus, when, when he came into the world, you know, the sacrifices and offerings you did not desire, that's not what he wants. What's us? but a body that you prepared. Uh, burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased with. So I said, well, here I am. I have come to do your will, my God. This is Jesus speaking to the Father. I've, I've come to do it. Now, the only Son of God, Jesus, He, he becomes human being. He, he be, takes on our flesh to do God's will. And God's will is to love you. So Jesus has arms now that he might hold and to bless the children. He has hands that he might reach out and touch the diseased and heal them. He has eyes that he might see our terrible distress and at times those very eyes would be filled with tears as he stood at our tomb. He had a mouth that he might proclaim the truth about us and to us. But then grace and hope. So that he could be with the most rebellious teen, the most awful sinner, the most biggest outcast the world has to offer and say to that person and to all of humanity that the kingdom of God, God's family has come near to you. Repent and turn from your old way of life and receive this new way where you are wanted and loved and you're part of the family. For your sins are forgiven. It, it is here in this family and in this love, well, that we, we get to see that it is the very body of Jesus 
that we have been made holy through his sacrifice. Now, if you've had that moment of knowing this, and being with Jesus, you see, real change comes into your life. Real religion. Real hope and faith and truth. Once Jesus has made your acquaintance. He is the love. He is the true love that our hearts have longed to receive. Now you let that really sink in for a moment as you, as you think about those darker days of doubts that you've had. And, you, and as you and I have wondered, does God really love me? Well, here's the answer. The body of Jesus. The accommodations that have been made, the sacrifice, the suffering, the death for you on the cross. It almost seems silly now to ask the question, seeing the body of the beloved for us. And the longer that you're with someone who really loves you, and you really love them, the longer that you're with Jesus and attentive to what he's really saying in the words of Scripture, and, and more and more of your life is being opened up to Him. And you're with Him. There just naturally comes this, in this relationship, like any really loving relationship, those moments where you kind of get the, the, the idea that you need to change. You know? And it really is it's speeded up with the question... Jesus, is there something in me that you would like to change? What stinks and needs a bath? What is rude and unkind? What, what is in my personality and the way I, I, I think and what I daydream about? What is it about me that really needs changed? Now, that's a very scary question. Because when we are with human beings, typically that change comes because we've annoyed them or hurt them or they've got some selfish agenda. When we've asked this question of ourselves, like, wow, I really need to change something, we quickly realize we have no power to do it. Our, our willpower is not a power. Not the really deep change. See, the amazing thing is with the beloved, with Jesus, is that finally, who has no agenda but to love us, and someone who has all of the power to make the change in us. You see, we saw some of this power as the Holy Spirit filled Elizabeth and her unborn baby, John. When the two women, the two moms come together and the baby leaps with it. Think about this. A baby leaps in her womb because the first trimester Jesus is in his presence. I mean, that's the kind of power, the infilling of the Holy Spirit that's available. And now, the Holy Spirit is active and available and at work in us too so that you and I might have a really deep relationship, a really deep love with God and holiness of life. We tend to put holiness of life as kind of a churchy word, like somebody who just prays a lot. When you hear holiness of life, and when I say it, think of it as somebody who's doing everything Jesus has taught us to do. Remember when we're baptized and we say, now teach them to do everything I have commanded you? It, it, it's all of the goodness of Jesus becomes more and more part of us. Now there are two catalysts that the Holy Spirit is using to bring about this love and holiness in us. Those two catalysts, the first is this God-given ever-growing conviction deep within the soul 
that God loves you. You see, none of this really is going to go anywhere. Not, not, not any life change will really happen in your life unless you believe deep within your soul, God loves me. Because then whatever change would happen would just kind of fall into a, a, a category, well, I don't like the consequences of my bad choices. And as long as those bad consequences, I'll try and change. But when those bad consequences aren't there, I'm just going to go back and do it until I get caught or until it becomes bad again. Real deep change comes from being with the beloved. And it's not a burden. And, and it's not a drudgery. There's just that love, that spirit of Christ in you that just desires to do that. And then the power to do it. It's something that's growing, you. this growing holiness. And so the question then, the second catalyst, there's this, this growing conviction that I'm loved, and then the catalyst number two is the question that is prayerfully asked, Jesus, what do you desire to change in me? Now as this answer begins to come, and, and keep in mind, I've been writing this sermon all week, and you can't do this kind of a sermon and not have it infect you and, and like, okay, Jesus, what do you desire to change in me? And the answer comes and it's like, oh, yeah. Oh. And, and it's, it's not a guilt it's like, oh, I need to fix this, but Jesus, you're the one fixing this. Thank you. And life is so much better because of that. To help you with this real ongoing life with Jesus to help remember, well, what are the dynamics again? I have a postcard. I, I did this one other time. I did it again. And it says on the postcard, and you can pick one of these up on the, the entryway table. Take it home. And the first is just a statement of truth that I am loved. I am someone in whom Christ dwells and in whom he delights. And that is what needs the, the, the Holy Spirit to sink deeply into your heart. Because it's only in love that this change comes. And then the prayer, Jesus, what would you like to change in me? I invite you to take this, take it home and pray it. And then be patient and attentive to the answer. And no reason to be afraid of the beloved as he continues to work in you a really deep love and holiness of life. Amen.